Hello, this is Trevor Shin from AppleNaps.com, and we have a brand new build of iOS 5 on a fourth generation iPod Touch. Now let's start setting up iOS 5. Now as you can see, there's no white sync cable at all. You just slide to set up without iTunes, without a computer. Let's just go through the setup really quick, English, United States. And as you can see, this is completely effortless, and this is the beginning of no more sync cable from Apple. Let's set this up. Let me enter password, okay? Um, now you can restore from iTunes with your actual sync cable, or you can restore from a cloud backup, which we don't have, so we'll just set it up as a new iPod Touch. We'll skip this step because we don't really need the Apple ID yet. And now let's really start using our new iPod Touch and getting into iOS 5. Now, the biggest part of iOS 5 is the notification system. Just swipe down from the top of the screen, and here we have stocks and weather. We'll swipe back up, and now let's try to get this uh, notification system going with uh, the new iMessage system. We got our little message sent from an iPad. Right at the top, we'll see the animation as the message disappears. A little rotate, real subtle, no more popping up in your face. And this also, you can access your message from the little notification center. Now we'll go into iMessage, which is another new feature, which brings text message, even MMS message, as you can see an image right here of a map to the iPod Touch and the iPad and allows communication between all iOS devices. Now you can also access messages just from the little app now stock on the iPod Touch as part of iOS 5. Now we'll go into the settings. Let's dive into the settings. We see Twitter in the settings. Actual Twitter and let's install it right here. You don't even need to go to the App Store. Twitter is now installed on your iOS device. Now let's see how Twitter is built in. Now you know we can just use the standard official Twitter app, but also you can tweet from within stock apps. For example, here's the Maps app. Now let's tweet out our location from the map. As you can see, you don't have to go into the Twitter application. You can tweet right from within the Maps app, no problems whatsoever. Now let's dive back into the settings app again. So we'll go and we see another new feature, iCloud iCloud is built right into the settings. You can turn on and off the push and sync capabilities of mail, contacts, calendars, your photo stream, also your bookmarks, your notes. We don't want to set up a mail account just yet. Even find my iPhone, iPod, iPad feature is built right in. Also there's storage option. We see we still have the full 5 gigs. We can buy more storage. There's, it's not activated yet, not till fall. The entire system is built into iOS 5, but it's not really going to be available and activated until the fall. So that's the iCloud options you now get as part of iOS 5. Now we'll jump back out into the new Reminders app, which is the new to-do of to-dos built by Apple, so you don't need a separate to-do app. Now Reminders really give you the just basic interface. You can add lists and notes and stuff. But the neatest feature is that you can set up alerts based on not only time but also based on location so you can be alerted when you leave a location or when you arrive at a location to do a particular task let's go in and see the options so as I said on a day now on a location it lets you pick and you can either choose your current location or you can choose an address but the address currently is only going to be from your contacts whether contacts are stored on the device or the iCloud but no options to just use, have the maps incorporated in here to pick a new location without creating a whole contact for the location. But overall, that's the new Reminders app built into iOS 5. Now we'll see the new Newsstand feature, which allows you to add newspapers and magazine subscriptions right in the iBook-themed folder right on your home screen. Right now, the subscription store isn't activated, and we don't have any subscriptions. But this is where they will all be stored at. Now let's try the new camera functionality. As you can tell, we'll turn the device off, double tap the home screen, and a little camera icon pops up. Without even unlocking the device, you now have access to the camera. Also, you have options to turn on or off the grid to help you align images. And so, right now the device is locked, but we have all the entire camera options. Plus, you can include video as well. Now let's turn the device off again and start over to show how quick it is. So double tap, tap the camera icon right here you got your camera set up press the volume up button and right there your pictures taken done you can put it back away in your pocket and then also you can swipe from the camera to go to your camera roll 
so you don't actually have to press the little bottom button to go to your camera wall, it's just to swipe away. Now we'll look at our pictures, and as you can see, the new uh, editing photos feature isn't added in yet, so you can't do the rotating, cropping, red-eye fix, auto-enhance features just yet, but they sure definitely will be coming. Also with the camera, you have to notice that the entire process, you can see, we're still locked. Also not included in this video is when you're taking a picture, you can tap and hold the center of the screen to adjust the brightness level and autofocus on aspects of your image. Now let's go to the Mail app. So there's a few slight adjustments to Mail. The first thing is uh, the contact field. So after you enter contact, you can now drag your contact between the two, the CC and the BCC field. Now beyond that, there's also adjustments in the message itself so there's more options. You start typing away, you can select your text, and then you get a new set of options. The first is the special file styling, so you can have bold underline or italics to your text. Also, there's the new system-wide define function, so no matter what app you're in, you have the dictionary functionality. And then also, there's the quote level, which is mail specific, which you can increase and decrease like forwarded and replied messages would have. There's also security enhancements which aren't seen here. So now let's go into Safari. Now the biggest enhancement to Safari is the tab browsing which isn't on the iPhone iPod Touch version but there is the new reading list feature so we're loading up the Apple iOS 5 feature list and you can add to reading list. So this allows you for offline viewing of any web article you want. This is like a read it later instapaper feature. So now you can see here's the reader function all everything is stripped out of the way so you can just read your article now also to go back to the Twitter function Safari also has tweet integration as well let's go back to the home screen and check out another stock app that got some improvements that would be Game Center the first thing is there's a new achievement scoring system so rather than one achievement you get the points associated with that achievement so the developers choose points for each achievement so rather than one achievement you get like 10 points 20 points also, you can change the photo to personalize your profile. We don't really have too many personal ones, but here's the E3 picture. And so now you can see you have a photo for your profile, and all your friends can do the same thing. Speaking of friends, there's a new friend system so that you can view friend recommendations. So your new friends or your potential new friends are based on the friends you already have, which is based on the number of friends in common they have. So you can really build your friends list based on associations. Also, the game system has been improved, so there's now game recommendations. All the Game Center games you have go to like a genius type feature to give you new games you would like. Back to the achievements, you can see here in RoboSurf that you get 10 points for this achievement rather than just those 20 of 35 achievements. Same thing for 10, 20, so you get a whole new thing of achievement points rather than just achievements. Also, you can buy the apps from within. So you have like an app store just of games built right into Game Center. Also going back to the friend system, you can sort your friends by the number of points and you can see the total achievement points of all iOS players. Another feature is the purchase tab in the app store and the iTunes store which allows you to re-download past purchases completely for free. Now this is also silently updated in iOS 4.3. So that's a wrap on everything new and iOS 5 and what to expect. Hope you enjoyed the Apple and Apps video walkthrough. Thank you.